Okay, so today I kind of have it on my mind, just a lot of the same stuff I've been talking about and um, just kind of expanding on it. Like when you have something on your mind, you know, like it, if you open up, I, th I think it happens to everybody, but I don't know. I cannot begin to think how somebody else processes and understands and thinks about the world. But <clears throat> to me, um, I'll just get more and more insights into whatever it is I'm thinking about, like more light bulb mo moments, yeah, so many of those. Um, but so it's a lot of different things and I'm gonna kind of try and see if I can bring them all in together and make it <laughs> make sense. I feel like some of this stuff is just like, I just ramble, but I really feel like that there's hidden gems in there for somebody. And the universe brings that somebody to it. And it could just be one person. This could just be a cathartic way for me to get through quarantine to um, just catalog my existence during this time and the things I'm thinking about at this time or something, you know, whatever it is, it just, it is what it is. And I'm, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to like ride the wave, just have fun. And, you know, it's fun to sit here and talk. It is cathartic. It does make you... Um, when you live alone, you don't have anybody to talk to. So, um, yeah, the appointment is set today for Winston. And um, it is so emotional. I had to set it yesterday. Like, they couldn't do it the same day. And so, once you set it, you just, your mind just keeps going around all these different things. Like, and... Um, I just kept praying and praying he would die before they even had to come. I just feel so, he's deteriorated so much, just so fast. And um, I feel really bad for him. And it, it is like uh, this whole thing of the, I am ending his life today. I'm making this decision. And it is, um, I don't even like to kill bugs, so. <laughs> to take your companion and say, well, I know you're sick and I know you're, it's like, it's a lot to wrap your head around. And, you know, it makes me think about dogs, just dogs in general. These uh, creatures that we've, you know, we've taken over, <clears throat> bred them the way we want them, tried to bring parts of their personality out that we wanted. And, uh, you know, most dogs are so, far away from what their natural state of being is. And, um, you know, we've made them for our own amusement and sometimes for people's own abuse. I mean, dogs have had, there's a lot of dogs that have a rough life. And, um, and watching how uh, having two dogs and having one get sick, uh, you can just, you start seeing like the change in the, uh, what's going on with them. Like Estella had never tried to take his food before and she wanted to take his food away from him. She was constantly, um, you know, if he would get up to go outside, you know, he's already weak and she's, she's huge and she's knocking him and stuff. And it's just, and I can see in my head, you know, and if dogs weren't domesticated by us, if they just lived a wild life like deers and stuff that, um, they would be like wolves, you know, one would get sick, they shun them, they push them away, be mean to them, make them go away so they don't have food, so that kind of speeds up the process. And yet we've taken them and taken over their existence and made the decisions and, you know, we don't feed them. Most dogs don't get their natural diet. Most people don't even know what a dog's natural diet is. And, um, you know, they just feed him these bags of these dried out pebbles that's supposed to be uh, healthy for him that are full, full of um, toxic ingredients and additives and all sorts of stuff that are giving dogs cancer. <clears throat> so, you know, but with the weird irony there is that that is what human beings are to a more advanced uh I don't know if I want to call them more advanced beings, more advanced species, more advanced, you know, they're, um, 
but this is uh this is definitely what is occurring now is us having that realization just like if dogs all of a sudden woke up and go you know why am i here what am i doing in your house what if i want to have my own house what it uh, you know if i'm born here why all the questions one of the questions to me was definitely like how can they sell you a piece of the earth how do they say they own the earth how i mean you can't buy the earth and um it, it makes me think about because i think that the indigenous people had um you know in all the different territories around the globe the 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 people who were living with um with nature and stuff and not having interference by uh religion and the missionary uh the uh soldiers you know all the different experiences they had to go through to get their land taken away but those people that were just living in their most natural state of being that is the that is the way we're all meant to live that's what i really believe like you know tribes are where we should be looking of how to create a structure because that's the kind of stuff that was going on for a, a long long time until uh you know people stepped in and took over and uh, you know like in america <laughs> took everything away took away where they lived and said no you can't live there anymore we're, we're just gonna have that be open space you know we don't we don't need anything there but we have a little place over here we're not gonna call it a jail but it's we're gonna call it a reservation we're gonna stick you guys all there and you know we'll give you some alcohol you know uh we'll we'll throw you some a couple things here and there just create the most miserable life for you that ends up being full of addiction and pain and suffering it's just it's such a shame such a shame that they did that and you know still i i just believe that those people are the ones that can give us the most insight of how to be i uh, you know just the um the healing and stuff the way that they do it with uh, plant-based medicines and um you know the, i the whole thing with their um, experiences and getting closer to their soul and how they live, you know, understanding the spirit of the eagle and all that stuff, you know, that's what we, we've all been cut off so much and made to believe that everything is crazy and ghosts are scary and, uh, you know, we need to be scared of everything, <laughs> everything. So, um, yeah, this is going to be changing our existence on this planet and going back to that more truer connection to the earth and all things. And I, that's what I look forward to. Like, it's going to be, some of the things will be different. I still think there's going to be types of, like, nomadic travelers who just go around and you're just experiencing different places and um you know that aren't going to be set but i think that people are going to start moving out of the cities i think there's so much open space out there that they're going to start moving out away from the cities and they're going to start building their own communities forming their own cities their own uh governing agencies their own police uh yeah it's going to be and you know, people aren't going to stay in an area that they don't align with the other people. And, um, you know, just speaking about alignment is to me, um, like about God and religion and stuff, because religion to me is one of the controlling fear factor things that they've used against human beings to control them. And you can tell right away because they've taken the idea of God and fracture it into all these different groups to fight about who and what God is. And um, as soon as God becomes only for a certain group, 
<clears throat> you know you're in the wrong direction. My God is an all-inclusive God. My God gives me control. It is, uh, my God lets me experience life and grow at my own pace. My God is not judgmental. My God is all about love and acceptance and, um, uh, and I, you know, like to me, Jesus came and it was a, it was a man who was really in touch and he was bringing messages and then they took his messages and they, um, edited them. They took out what they didn't want and, you know, it was also, and then sold it as the book that you need to live by to a certain group of people. And you know, they sold an idea, sold a story, and they kind of, um, they kind of vilified God. Um, so I think we've just been misled. We've been misled of our connection to God. We've been misled about who and what we are, who and what this place is, what this experience is. Can you imagine if the dogs were suddenly could just go out and live the way they wanted, run the neighborhoods if they want, just live free, that uh, what their experience would be? And that's what, you know, we're essentially doing is to, and then plus all of these crimes against humanity, where all of this money is going to go back into the creation of what was supposed to be when people weren't hoarding the money and making us beg for every crumb, every morsel, <clears throat> that um, the money that they've all hoarded and now they've committed crimes and that money is going to all go back into the system now. And there's going to be riches beyond belief, all the things that they told us before that we didn't deserve and that we couldn't have and there wasn't enough. There was more than enough and there's gonna be more than enough. And we're moving into a time of abundance and love and freedom. And it's just such an exciting time. And I just think that there's so much with the storytelling, like I said, about us just having insights into things and sharing information and stuff. And you know, hopefully there will be some people who will listen to these and that we can start sharing stories together. It would be really cool if people would share a story, you know, audio or video and send it to me and, and then I'll post it so we could just get a whole group of us t sharing stories that had an impact on us so that maybe that that impact can affect someone else and they can learn by our stories. And we don't have to overthink our stories. We just have to share our stories and be real and be authentic, have the intent of being real and what you're bringing. Don't have a hidden agenda. Don't be manipulative to get what you want. Be free and open to all that is. And um, all that is will just bring you blessing after blessing once you have this realization and you tune into that energy. It's just that we're going into such an exciting time. And I just want to bring so much positivity and excitement and um, unity together and that's what I feel like I'm all about so um, I might do another one uh, I mean this day is already so emotional I've been up all night that's one thing too when they're giving you these messages and stuff they want you to get out it's like they don't let you sleep they wake you up they'll put you to sleep suddenly then they'll wake you up and then you just are, keep getting flooded and it's uh kind of exhausting for your brain. So I feel like I have huge bags in my eyes. I feel super tired, <laughs> but um, this is already an emotional day, um, you know, ending somebody's existence on this planet, even though I know, you know, and I keep telling him, you can come back to me. You can come back in another dog and any kind of energy. You can come back, you know, um, you know, this isn't, this isn't the end getting out of this sick old weak body. I just, he's such a free spirit and it's gonna be exciting, but man, that's emotional. This is quite the experience. So anyways, I might come back and talk about it some more. Cause it is cathartic. So, talk to you later.